start switches. Well, we have probably all used one of these. Well, I have used uh, this thing for years. Um, but if you have a lot of different retro systems uh, and you want to get the best possible picture quality with RGB, you are going to run into some limitations. As you can see, this switch only has three inputs. And um, well, only one of the inputs uh, has RGB quality. Uh, well, you have just one of these uh, three switches here. It's all fine and dandy, very nice uh, to start with. But uh, well, not the greatest. And here's another one of those cheapies. This is also a completely mechanical switch. Uh, the picture quality on these things is not particularly great. Uh, these are just really cheaply made and this one has RGB in all three inputs but um, you have to uh, have only one of these buttons selected. If you happen to uh, enable two of them at the same time you get crosstalk. You're going to see two pictures at the same time. Not a good solution. So therefore I have uh, come up with a better solution. Uh, my dad is an electronics engineer and uh, well, we decided to build our own. Yes, we have built our own solid state 10 input RGB SCART switch. And I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Well, first we have the uh, controls over here. Um, this is the power switch. These are the two input selections. And this is a uh, mode switch for selecting between RGB and composite. Currently, uh, the NES is uh, selected, so it is in composite mode. Um, so I switch to the Super Nintendo. Uh, composite. With this switch it's uh, RGB. Now we're uh, running the Commodore 64 DTV. Commodore 64. Mega Drive. Master System. PlayStation 2, GameCube, and I can just switch on the fly between RGB and composite. <laughs> um, this device does not auto detect the kind of input mode, so you have to use the switch. Uh, I've also created a remote control that I will demonstrate shortly. This is a DVD player with my favorite movie on it. And uh, this is the DVR. And you can easily cycle back and forth. Well, let's um, see that uh, Commodore 64 again and the DTV. So that's uh, basically how you control the device. Next, I have here a uh, remote control, which does the exact same thing. It's very easy to switch modes. As you can see, the value changes in the display. So that was a little bit of the uh, operation and now I will show you a bit of the uh, screen in action. So here's a, a little demonstration of the system in action but now with uh, display. Uh, first game I'm showing here is uh, Batman uh, Return of the Joker on the Nintendo. Um, this is in composite mode uh, because the NES does not support uh, any uh, RGB, at least not without really difficult modding. And when I flick the switch to RGB mode you see I get no picture. Um, so next system is... Uh, Super Nintendo, this is uh, Pop and Twinby, um, and it is an RGB mode. And now, uh, yeah, so next system is a system that only supports composite. This is the um, C64 DTV, next, Commodore 64. 
this is uh, the Mega Drive and the picture is in uh, monochrome uh, when it's in uh, 60 Hz mode in, in composite. But if I flick the switch to RGB I get color and RGB on the uh, Mega Drive is absolutely fabulous. Uh, whilst I'm uh, filming it straight from the TV, I'm also recording it uh, to my uh, DVR uh, so I can edit in uh, a bit of uh, footage uh, in uncompromised quality. Um, especially for this reason I have uh, fitted the uh, SCART switch with two SCART outputs uh, and it uses a little amplification circuit for that so that you don't get any uh, signal quality loss. Uh, basically one uh, signal goes straight to the TV and the other SCART output goes to the uh, recorder and this allows me to uh, record gameplay footage without any lag problems. Next system, Sega Master System and this is uh, Afterburner. This is a really great game. Um, so that's RGB mode and this is composite mode. And you see when I flick a switch in the top left corner of the screen the uh, mode changes and uh, that's well, basically done by the TV when the, it detects a certain voltage signal it uh, switches to RGB mode uh, some TVs don't display this but the better ones do um, so that's a way to verify if your uh, RGB cable is working um, by the way uh, the sync uh, that I'm using is simply sync on composite because that's the standard sync uh, method used by uh, European SCART cables. Um, if you are a real purist you can also use a C-Sync cable, it will work with this uh, system. Um, but well, I, th I think C-Sync is a bit unpractical for my purposes. Uh, it's just co more convenient for me to just use a standard uh, SCART ca RGB SCART cable for a system that uses the sync on composite. I think the difference in quality is kind of negligible in my personal experience. Uh, so this uh, next system here is um, the PlayStation 2 with uh, Lego Batman the video game. And this is a absolutely fabulous game. A really good soundtrack with uh, the original 1989 uh, soundtrack from Benny Elfman and well basically you play Batman in a Lego universe and it's a game I'm currently playing it's a, a really nice game so next we have um, the GameCube running Ice Age 2 the Meltdown very cutesy, uh, cutesy platformer really like it uh, so that's that and last one uh, is the ninth system attached to uh, this card switch and that's my DVD player well the tenth system I have connected is the uh, DVR the DVR is recorded to both an input and an output but because I'm recording now I cannot really uh, switch to that device uh, but uh, well so this is the um, DVD player Demonstrating my favorite movie of all time, The Lift. Really nice movie with an awesome soundtrack. So that was about it, I guess, for um, the systems shown in action. Uh, I think it's time to um, have a look around the back. So here you see uh, all the systems that I have attached to it. The Daiko Raven system is a C64 DTV that I have modded. Then we have a regular C64. Then here we have a uh, GameCube. Then here is a uh, PlayStation 2 and in the front we have the Sega Master System. Next we have the Mega Drive here. And there we have the NES and here on top we have the uh, DVD player and the DVR and the Super Nintendo. Now let's have a look at how all these things are connected. Well this is a look at the back. <laughs> let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. You see that there's a lot of cables here and uh, each input is labeled. 
uh, it's so crowded actually that I cannot really show much of it. Uh, oh yes, another thing I forgot to mention is that it also has a um, additional audio output. Um, so I can uh, have the sound on my amplifier, which is really nice. So I have really great sound as well. And here is a look at the back. There you can see the uh, additional audio outputs, the power jack and well, all the SCART cables. So now I'm going to um, show a little bit of the captured footage. Um, as you can see uh, I was recording this uh, on my Sony uh, DVR, the hard disk uh, recorder, which I uh, bought for just one euro on a flea market, believe it or not. And um, what you can see here is that I'm switching between RGB and composite on the fly. Um, and if you look uh, closely you can see that the uh, composite image is uh, a bit blurry and that the colors are uh, a bit darker and a bit different. And on the other hand the RGB uh, looks a bit grainy but it's a much sharper picture. So uh, that's a bit of the comparison I'm doing here and uh, well, well I think you can uh, drastically see the differences and now we're going to uh, compare the two side by side. Uh, this is uh, Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo and well I think you can quite clearly see a bit of difference here. Uh, the composite in this case looks a bit brighter than the RGB. I'm not sure why but uh, still the uh, RGB looks a bit uh, sharper. Um, the difference uh, is uh, very visible in things like logos and text. Um, as you can see the text, uh, the Konami copyright text and the menu text is a bit more visible on the RGB image. Uh, and well, this is uh, gameplay footage side by side. Um, you can still see a little bit of difference. Uh, for instance, the uh, white uh, colors, um, let's say the status panel uh, that indicates the, the player and the score and uh, the likes. Uh, just the, the border of it uh, is just a bit uh, more defined on the RGB image. Um, also the shading on the demolition ball is a bit different. Um, so that's about uh, well, for the uh, graphical comparisons. Okay, next up is uh, Super Thunderblade on the Mega Drive. Um, you can see that the uh, composite image is a bit, well, crusty looking. Uh, the Sega logo on the RGB uh, looks a bit brighter um, and just overall sharper. And um, well, yes, um, gameplay footage. Um, the uh, composite image is a little bit blurry as you would expect. But the funny thing is that superficially, uh, sometimes the composite would look a little bit better. But I think it just has to do with the brightness. Uh, in reality, when you uh, see it on a uh, CRT monitor, you can still see quite a bit of difference. Uh, the RGB generally is just a lot sharper. Um, well, the recording uh, doesn't always do it justice, but uh, if you um, see it in a bigger frame, you can uh, actually see the pixels on the RGB and on the composites, the pixels tend to blur a little bit and they sort of get artifacts. And uh, well, yeah, it's also a bit of an acquired taste perhaps. Um, sometimes you may actually prefer a little bit of blurriness and on the other hand, uh, you may want a bit of sharpness. Um, but in general with RGB uh, colors will be more defined. Uh, in the composite world the color red for instance will suffer quite a bit. 
Um, it just has to do with how the signal is uh, composed and uh, yeah, well the, the signals are all intermodulated and everything is squeezed to one wire and um, then these signals have to be separated by your TV using a uh, separation filter and um, these are less than perfect so no matter how good you make that separation filter you will still have a little bit of loss in color fidelity. This is New Zealand story on the uh, master system and the RGB image is a bit darker and you can actually see a little bit of lining. Um, not sure why but if you see the gameplay footage you can clearly see that the uh, composite is really blurry and that the uh, RGB is just really nice and sharp. But don't be fooled by differences in um, well, in contrast and brightness, it just has to do a little bit with the sharpness. And so, if you um, think, well, that's all rather nice, a 10 inputs cartridge, I'd like to build one myself. Well, um, here are some photos to conclude the video. Uh, these are some photos of the build process. Um, I must say that I have not built it myself. Uh, my dad uh, pretty much made everything. I just uh, came up with a functional specification for it and uh, we found some project IDs for using analog bus uh, ICs. And that's what we use in this uh, device. Uh, they're chips from Maxim. And uh, there's uh, no less than 20 of them in this project. The reason being that uh, we need to switch 8 signals per input. And uh, well, therefore you need 2 chips. Because one chip can only handle 4 signals. And so um, that's why also the price for a unit uh, was rather expensive. Um, it contains about 400 euros worth of parts. Yes, that sounds a bit discouraging, I know, uh, but we used rather expensive components. For instance, we didn't use cheap Pertinex board, but we used uh, the epoxy board and, well, yeah, we just uh, spent a lot of money on it, I guess. So, that was it. Thanks for watching.